<laughs> Good, clean fun. Yes, sir. How Keeps you us off the streets. That's right. And that's the important. Top Toledo streets. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't spent too much time here, but uh, I can tell what you're talking right, about. Right, there's trouble to be. I'm had. doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. It's and good we're to both be here. in uh, we're both in good hands now that we've got these uh, brand new signature model guitars coming out in that, 2019. That Reverend is, guitars. That is correct. And uh, I've been salivating over that instrument, and yeah, you've been taking and a I'm look a at this. I'm a telly man myself too, you know. So uh, T man. Yes, I say. a Tist. And now it's a. Uh, <laughs> A, wh what am I going to call myself now? That this is this is called the the Gristle Master. <laughs> of course, <laughs> that suits you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have some it. fun at Nam. We're going to do a little show together on that Friday night. Yes. And do you know where that is? Is that a place called the Slide Bar in beautiful Fullerton, California? Great. On the Friday the twenty sixth or seventh. I think it's. We'll find out. I think it's the 25th. I think it's the 25th. You are correct. And we play from like 8 to 10. Yeah. And, um, and since it's the slide bar, I've, I've made up my mind to play some slide I think that's that probably night. in the cards. Yeah. But anywhere you would go, whether it was named the slide bar or not. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this guitar, man. This well, is so cool looking. I love the... I love the color. I love the raised centerpiece. I love the fact that You've got these really wonderful, uh, based on the original idea of the of the teak style guitar. Right. There. So you're retaining the basic tone, but adding your own thing to it. Yes. I mean, well, one of the things, just aesthetically speaking, I I just wanted a slightly larger bodied instrument because I'm a big fella, and everyone is always commenting every time I play regular traditional T style guitar, really any kind of guitar. They go, "Was that some kind of a miniature guitar?" And uh, it's very subtle, though. I mean, I picked up this guitar. I didn't notice. Right. It, I, it, it it's didn't dawn on me at all. If you hadn't told me, I. It's just, know. and it, when you put when you put it next to a regular T style instrument, it's not uh, it's not a drastic thing, but it is a subtle thing. It does make a difference. So when I'm playing, it just mm -hmm. looks a little bit more proportionate. Mm -hmm. um, and as we were kind of thinking about different ways of presenting it, um, uh, I had this this funky guitar this buddy of mine made for me um, out in California. And it's a uh, it's a Firebird body with a bolt-on Tele neck uh, yeah. with a Firebird pickup, but then a Tele bridge and Tele controls and so on and so forth. And I was doing one of my Facebook Live things, and Joe Naylor saw it, and he's like, hey, you know that, that funky guitar that you have with that, uh, you know, that Firebird body? He goes, what if we did a raised uh, middle section mm -hmm. on, on your guitar? I said, well, that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. So that's where that came from. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted the three-saddle bridge, a brass saddle bridge, because I just think that they have a thing. They do have a thing, and, and I was always uh, puzzled why the original T guitars had uh, had brass, and right. then they switched to metal, and, and everybody said, oh no, the brass has more tone, it has yeah, more for, sustain, for whatever or whatever. It's just you know, got a little something, something. Yeah, cut, cut down on the highs a little bit, I think. And uh, Wilkinson makes a really, really good one. It's intonated, so you don't have to worry about, you know, doing the old Danny Gatton and bending it, you know. No. <laughs> so it's intonated and ready to rock. And it has my signature uh, Fishman pickups that I work with them on. Right. Uh, and actually, the, the pickups from Fishman contain everything as far as the control panel, the input jack, and the pickups themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have their the upside of them. Well, they're all upsides as far as I'm concerned. Um, they are totally look like regular T-style pickups, mm -hmm. um, but they are noise-free, so there's no 60-cycle hum. You don't lose any highs when you turn down the volume. Um, and they have two voices uh, that are switched yeah, by this. Yeah, what's this, this sneaky-looking little Sneaky little, little thing button here. right there. So the way that the pickups are made is that um, they're kind of stacked aerospace circuit boards around a magnet. I know that sounds weird, but what basically what it allows you to do is the blank canvas that you can then have a preamp on board that'll take that and make it be anything you want it to be. So we voiced it to be, uh, the first voice is kind of like a white guard telly. So it's like, oh, sorry, let me turn this up here. This amp's making a little bit of a strange buzzing sensation, but that's that's not the guitar. Uh, <laughs> Kind of a uh, white guard sound, which is. Let me turn that down just a little bit there. The strange sounds are manifest, ladies and gentlemen. So it's got this tone. If I press that button in, 
just adds like about two dB. It just gets a little meatier between the two voices. So I can be going. Just get a little push over the edge. Just get right. a little bit more meat. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, if I'm in the heat of battle on the bridge pickup and I just want a little skosh more or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll hit that button to get a little bit more. When I do my slide thing, a lot of times I'll go on that back pickup, I'll press that button and then just turn back the tone control there a little bit and it fattens it up enough. Yeah. Well, you, you being a player, it's really, uh, you say the heat of battle. And I use that same expression because a lot of times uh, guitars are made by non-players who don't step on a stage in front of people. And they don't know what, uh, what it's like to all of a sudden, you know, you need to go into a, a space where, where that guitar is assisting you. Right. And sometimes just guitars that, that are designed, you know, just on paper or just by right. a non-playing person, uh, they don't take into this into accountability. Right. And so to have a, a switch like that where you where you can kind of like, oh man, I really need to just really let this, this right. next passage soar and it's right there and right. you've got it and you came up with that idea. So, I mean, that's, a, that's a, a, an instrument made with a player's perspective in mind. Correct. So it's gonna really be a, a great feature for somebody who plays this style guitar or who wants a guitar like this in their arsenal. Yes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about getting it out and, you know, it's got the locking tuners, it's got the uh, compound radius neck and the whole nine yards and just visually, I, might, I, I wanted that kind of transparent top with yeah. the opaque back and sides and they nailed it and so there's this blue, there's a, there's a party red as we call it and then kind Perfect of a vintage for yellow. Greg. Yeah, I like to fiesta, if you will. Uh, so I'm really, really excited about it. And it's, and it's something that's, you know, with all these guitars, I mean, you don't have to harvest a kidney to purchase it, which is, which is nice because, you know, obviously vintage guitars and of course a lot of, you know, there's a lot of boutique -ish stuff that really, really costs a lot of money. And I find that these guitars, you pick them up, they stay in tune, they sound great, they look great, they're magnificent, and you don't have to kind of engage in felonious activity in order to procure one. <laughs> well, it's so true. And it's, it's one of the, it's one of the, f the features about Reverend Guitars as a company that, that has always interested me. And, uh, and I've always appreciated the fact that they made such good quality guitars that sound good, but yet they're not going to break the bank right. to get into it. And uh, great guitars for the road, great guitars for recording, covers a lot of basses for less money. Right, and when you look at this thing, I mean, you would, this thing looks about as opulent as you can get. I mean, that, th every <laughs> When I first saw that yeah, thing, and then Ken and I did a, 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 an appearance at this uh, Monster Music up in, in New York, and while we were there, they had like one of the prototypes there, and people just were out of their minds. Oh, thank you. They were you. looking at that thing, just going, oh my God. Thanks. Taking pictures, they all were salivating over it. It's, well, it's I've always appreciated the look of drums. You know, the right. drums have, the, they're often covered in a material that's not unlike this. And uh, and I always kind of like that idea on on the lap steels of 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 old. And yeah. Uh, even some older guitars, they used to be covered in a in a material that was sh kind of shrink wrapped onto the body of the guitar. Now, could they can't do that today because that stuff happens to be extremely flammable. Right. And uh, you know, you could, your whole house could go up in flames if you put a cigarette near it or right. something. So this is not that, but we've uh, achieved the same effect. I think it's a lovely effect, and we've uh, kind of uh, Joan Eller uh, really researched a, a lot of different sources to get this really cool binding, which uh, which is I refer to as a rope binding uh, around the edge, and um, of course has an ebony neck. It's a lot of features that your guitar has: the locking tuners, uh, the Reverend pickups. These are humbuckers, of course, and uh, I've kept this one pretty simple, whereas my other, other guitars had a couple extra knobs and features like pan switching. This is your basic volume tone and three and position toggle switch. And uh, standard Bigsby roller bridge. Uh, the neck is, uh, on mine is satin here, so very easy playing. And of course this is more of a gloss black on the sides and back, but it all matches. And uh, so we're real happy with it. Call this one the soul shaker. Yeah, I love the little etching too on the pickups. Yeah. That, uh, Those little arrows. Yeah, I think Joe came up with that idea. We wanted to uh, just, uh, have a little uh, Art Deco motif on there, and that kind of 
It's beauteous. Thank you. I want one in the worst way. Well, We're going to make uh, a little deal. Know, yeah, we ought to switch around a little. Make, make an offer yeah. I can't uh -huh. understand. <laughs> and there's also a gray version of that as well. Yes, there is. Comes in, in a gray, sort of like Ringo's drum kit. Excellent. Well, maybe if you don't, maybe we should swap right now. Well, here you go. If you don't mind. No. Be my guest. Turn this in. I'll be here back here. It's going to be a little. <laughs> The first first solo I ever learned to play was on a Telecaster. It was the James Burton solo, ah. Traveling Man. You remember uh, that? Ah, uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do a little, uh, sure. little something? Yeah, start me off. Uh, let's do a little, uh, I don't know, maybe a. Yeah, let's do something. Here. Yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> Me too. Love it. 